Hello everyone and welcome to the Kenny Wallace Show brought to you by JEGS, the leader in high performance aftermarket car parts. And remember to go to JEGS.com. Well, you caught me in the shop today. So um, we raced 19 dirt races this year and it's gone extremely good. Uh, it has been my best year ever in dirt racing. However, when you run these old dirt cars, they get beat up and there's a lot of maintenance. I mean, after every single race, you're just working extremely hard on the car, making it relatively new and fresh for the next race. So uh, I just drilled off a body. You just simply take the drill and, uh, and drill the body off. Come here, Charlie, let me show you this. This is my, uh, this is where I put the body back on. These are the pop rivets. So these are aluminum pop rivets. And these things are extremely strong. And I like aluminum because I can drill them back out easier. If these are steel, it gets, it gets really hard. So we use aluminum pop rivets. Of course, we got a kick-ass pop rivet gun now. You know, remember back in the old days? My God, you couldn't even do it now. You, you'd be junk. So the, the pop rivet guns are so awesome. But anyway, this, this complete box right here, this is what I put my bodies on with. Uh, but I get a little bit of help along the way. So my dear friends up in Springfield, Illinois, uh, Algar Motorsports, Justin Algar's dad, and, and Justin runs in the Xfinity series, and he's a winner, he, he has done really good. That family, two hours from here, they got a great service. So I got the car up there because the old man needs a little help. So I, I took the body off and it's up there and we're getting a whole new body put on it, getting it freshed. Because we are, we are 19 races into it, we're going to get ready to, for this, this stretch here. Uh, summer goes pretty quick. But anyway, I took the body off. People say, Herman, what do you do with the body? So this was the quarter panel. It's pretty gnarly. This is the backside. I patch it up. and I mean, you got patching everywhere. Actually, the, the decals cost more than the aluminum. So by a, a four by eight sheet of, of this aluminum, which uh, is right here. So here, here's, the, uh, here's the hood. So uh, it's pretty cool. This would, be my, uh, this would be my hood. The carburetor would stick through here and then I put this on here. That keeps the dirt from hitting the carburetor. But anyway, this is, this is the way it all starts right here. We start out with simple sheets of plywood. This is four by eight sheet. Uh, that one there's a little shorter, but now we start these bodies and we got white and we got black down in here. So something like that, a four by eight sheet now, like up into 130, 150. I don't know exactly what it is. 130, $150 a sheet because of that virus. Prices went way up. So that's why the decals are just as expensive. So. Here's the right rear quarter panel. Here's a door. And uh, you're saying, why do, I, why do I save the old stuff? Well, the reason I save the old stuff is we like to help out with charity. We get in the middle of the winter and everybody starts having their fundraisers. We might have a cancer fundraiser, a le leukemia fundraiser, autism fundraiser. So I'm, I'm gonna show you something. You're gonna go, what? So look here. This is where I store it all. So we got, it, it stuff's not that bad by the way. So here's, here's a left rear quarter panel that's in pretty good, really good shape actually. But we decided to go ahead and put a whole new body on. Here's a left side, here's a left side door. And, uh, and you can see we got two noses, but Herminator likes to keep things clean. Now, it's hard to believe that we've run this good this year but in heat races, it gets gnarly and, and they roughed me up. So I've got a lot of junk metal and we're gonna make a run to the scrap metal yard because I don't like that junk around my place. And plus I'm cheap. I'm from Missouri, Missouri frugal. $10 is a lot to me. And uh, so I'll show you what we're gonna, we're gonna make a run. You and I are gonna make a run to the scrap metal yard and uh, Charlie's working the camera. Now, 
you're going to go, well, I could have fixed these wheels. Well, I know you could have, but I can't. I don't want to be leading a race all of a sudden to use, lose all the air out of my tires. I can fix that. Well, good, you fix it. All right, so we got a lot of stuff in here. Um, here's a, it's, you know, we got these lips bent all the way under. This, this was a, uh, this is a, a bad deal at Farmer City. And then uh, we, uh, we got bumpers that are destroyed. We got a, a spindle that's bent right here. The, the steering arm on the spindle's bent. So, uh, but this is metal. You take it to the scrap metal yard, then they take it to a foundry, they melt it all down and they, they use it again. So we'll see how much money we are going to get for this and uh it's about a 15 minute ride all right we're getting weighed right now we're gonna wait for the big horn they're weighing the truck and i'll show you what we're gonna do here all right okay so that means that means we weigh a certain amount let's say 4,000 pounds and I'm going to unload the metal first and then we'll come back around and we'll weigh it with all the metal out let's use this scrap let's use this one right here so Charlie we're going to get out and you watch me unload hey I do this all the time y'all don't do it hey yeah Wallace got all that NASCAR buddy I'm still a cheap man <laughs> all right let's go all right, we going to get all the metal out. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Oh, oh. Now, let me switch spot. I want you all to remember this. We don't waste anything. Those wheels, in my opinion, are destroyed. So, uh... I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be leading a race and all the air comes out of my tires. Hey, you know what, that's in the wrong pile. Let's go over here with that one. There we go. And I got some, uh, I got, you know, I come here all the time. I've never seen you. You knew? No, I've been here about six months. Oh, okay, good. So I got, uh, I got those wheels. This is what I got. And then I got some aluminum all the way. Turn around. All right, if you want, throw the rest of this steel off in that pile. That one right there? Yep, that big one right there. Okay, buddy. Right there. Uh, let me throw the battery in there, or do you want the battery? No, nah, bring me the aluminum and the battery. Oh, okay, good. Good stuff. That guy, uh, he pretty serious. I've never seen him before. He said he'd been here six months, but I don't know about that. Because I come down here all the time. Sometimes they got my body panels hanging in there. All right. By the way, we're a quarter mile from the Peavely Raceway. <laughs> all right. Okay, so I, I enjoy this. Hey, Wallace. Hey, Wallace, you sure do tear up a lot of stuff. These are bumpers. These, these go, these go underneath the front end. Spindle, drag link. <laughs> hey, this was a, a where was it? Lincoln, left rear lower radius rod. That's supposed to be straight. <laughs> Idler arm. Brake floater rod. That one might be okay, but I'm not.
to replace these before they break. Maybe I have a little too much NASCAR in me, but one thing I've learned is don't wait for it to break. All right, so put a new put a new hub on every year because it'll break. I've seen my old buddy Ray Bollinger at the dome. Of course, the dome was rough. Broke, I think he broke a spindle or a hub and didn't hit anything. So these things will break. It's, and here's the thing, it's on a race car. We're running a stock Pinto hub, stock Pinto hub on these modifieds. Look, the bearings aren't even very big. All right, now we're gonna roll on over. This is the fun part. He wants the battery and the aluminum. All right, now that we dumped all the metal out, we're gonna weigh again. Cause see, we weighed the truck. Now they're gonna now they're gonna weigh again, and they're gonna know how much metal I had, and we're gonna get paid on that. I think prices must be pretty good because you never see it this empty. If it's empty, it means means prices are up. So now he wants my aluminum and the battery there. That battery is a goofy battery. This is the right side interior. Got destroyed. That happened at Granite. Came back to finish fourth. <laughs> Charlie, let me make sure my, my private information is not on this thing. <laughs> 180 pounds. I don't know. $24.26. Can you see it? Look here. $24.26, baby. We in the money. Now we now we now we go to Cracker Barrel and eat. Let's go. Hey, I'm working for my food. <laughs> now now my now my property is clean and I don't have to worry about my property being junky. I got rid of all that junk stuff and uh, got a little money. So Kenny Wallace, people want to know, they thought you were retired. It yeah. seems like you're racing all the time. What's up with that? So I am retired. And what is up with me staying busy? You all will find out that when you retire, there's a sense of freedom. Now I can do what I want to do. So for example, last year I ran 76 dirt races, 76. Say that to yourself. Last year, I ran 76 dirt races. This year, we're halfway through July and I've only ran 19. So I'm only gonna run 30. I'd say that's cutting way back. I never said I was gonna quit racing. So I race right around home and that's what I do. Then the other deal was Marcus Smith, who owns all the NASCAR tracks. Marcus owns Bristol, Charlotte, Texas, you know, so on and so forth. Marcus called me up and said, Herman, let's bring that trackside lab live back. I said, really? And so he said, I want you to do 10 shows. And I said, I'll do six. Well, we settled on eight. Plus the one here in St. Louis, which is right here at home. So it's a total of nine. Well, it, it's fun, it's, it's easy, uh, they respect me, they show me respect. I'm not, they're not my boss, and it, it's fun. It's fun, they're not my boss, everybody's happy. So I'm running, I'm only running 30 races. Um, I am a side hustler too, as you can tell. I hustle, <laughs> I hustle. So when we go to Cabo next time, you know, I don't have to take money out of my investments. So I'm your Walmart greeter. That's what I am. I, I'm retired and I, I basically greet you at the Walmart now. And it's a lot of fun. So um, I race my dirt car. I do the nine trackside live shows, you know, including the one here at Gateway, which is the Worldwide Technology Raceway. And, and I'm, 
much better to my family now. I've always been a family man, but I'm much better to my family now. Now, we do not let anything get away with grandbabies' birthdays. Plus, I'm a better husband. We vacation really good now. In December, around the Dome, we go down to Key Largo. January, we go out to Arizona. February, we go to Cabo. So, uh, so yeah. So tell people about what you're doing with SRX. And it seems like the rain has messed up all racing this year. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about SRX. <laughs> First of all, I don't even know if that counts because it's, you know, I'm, I'm honored, right? So I'm running SRX and SRX is made up of people that have done something in the sport, you know, and uh, they called me and, uh, and they said, would you, would you run one race? at Wheatland, Missouri at Lucas Oil Speedway, August 17th. I said, I'd love to, because it's only three hours from my house. Now, I want to show you something, Charlie. Stay right here. We're talking about SRX, but I want to show you what's on the side of the highway right here. This is Kenny Schrader and Ray Mahler's I-55 Raceway. Look at this. This track is legendary. That racetrack, that's where I run on Saturday nights when I'm at home. That, tra that track right there has been voted on in some of the greatest World of Outlaw sprint car races. So anyway, that's how close I live to that track. But SRX, then they called me back. Don Hawk called me back and said, would you run Vermont? So I was gonna go to Vermont, but then that unbelievable storm, it's like, it's like Noah's Ark. It's like, you know, 30 days, 30 nights of rain. Uh, so everything at Vermont got flooded, all the basements of all the businesses. So, um, so they can't run Vermont. So now I'm going to run uh, a Stafford, Connecticut. Well, they're going to stay there two weeks in a row, which is pretty cool because that's the way it used to be when Thursday Night Thunder really happened back in the Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart days, right? They ran Thursday Night Thunder at the same track, Indianapolis Raceway Park. So I'm honored. I was all in to do the dirt race at Wheatland, Missouri, and they called me back and said, hey, what'd you do? Would you do Vermont? And then they said, okay, we canceled Vermont because of the you know, state of emergency in Vermont, and now we're running uh, Stafford, Connecticut, which is owned by the Jack Root family and a wonderful facility. And what about Cars Tour rescheduling? Yeah, oh my God, Charlie, you done such a, <laughs> I didn't know where you were going. You're now, busy. You got me. Well, yeah, but you're right. So. Vermont got, you know, emergency out. So that one got canceled. So then you're right. What was it back in? I don't know when it was, but we got rained out for the cars tour race. And that was Dale Earnhardt Jr. called me up. Jr. said, Herman. And of course I called him too. The story behind that is I called Jr. up and I said, I want to run one more Xfinity race. And he said, uh, to get it out of your system, why don't you just go ahead and run a cars tour race. So uh, between Dale Earnhardt Jr. and myself, I kept dreaming that I was going to run one more Xfinity race. So he got rained out at Tri County. This is recently you wanted to run an Xfinity race? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking, what about uh, a 60 year old Kenny Wallace running a truck race in his hometown? I mean, I would do it. it but, you know, I would do it because. I think any guy my age has always got that itch, got to do it one more time. It's like you just got to get it out of your system. Uh, yeah, I would do it. I, but it's got to be a, a decent truck, you know. I don't, I don't want to go out there just ride around because here's one thing I pride myself on right now. As you can tell, I'm in good shape. You just saw me getting in and out of my truck. Everything I do right now, I'm competitive in. I, I don't, I mean, I've, won, I've been winning this year, but I don't have to win as long as I compete well. So, uh, yeah, I would run a truck race. And I'm excited to run the Cars Tour race. We reschedule it for October 7th, South Boston, Virginia. And, and I've ran a lot of Xfinity races there back in the day. So, man, you just brought a lot out of me. And as we talk about rain, look at this, look at this sky now. And I'm supposed to race here tonight in a little bit. You just don't know what's going on. It's, you know, it was it was cool out, 
like cool meaning 88, 90 degrees. And then it, as soon as it went to 100 degrees, that 100 degree weather has made everything so volatile. And it, it's just these storms pop up out of nowhere. So hopefully we don't get rained out tonight at Tri-City Speedway here in Granite City, Illinois. So rain, tired of rain. But I buried the lead, baby Lila. Baby Lila, our newest grandbaby. Five grandbabies now. That makes five. We have four girls and one boy. And I'm going to tell you what. Listen, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Herman, put your hands on the wheel. That's how good these Toyotas drive. Look, it goes straight. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, well, that was crazy. That's the first grandbaby where I, you know, I left Atlanta, flew into Charlotte, went straight to the hospital because they started inducing our youngest daughter, Brittany, at eight o'clock at night. So we spent, the, I spent the night. Hey, I'll tell you what, I learned that when you're really tired, you can sleep on the concrete floor. So a day later, uh, baby Lila, L-I-L-A-H, baby Lila came at 4.58 in the day. The funniest story of it all, and I know Brittany, my youngest daughter, she won't mind me saying this. You know, they numbed her up, you know, when they put that in your back and numb you ladies up. Brittany, Brittany was so numb, she didn't even know the baby came out. <laughs> and she didn't admit it right away. Like later on, she goes, I didn't even know if the baby came out. And Brittany works out all the time. And so we're going, man, Britt, you're strong. You just popped that baby right out. And he goes, oh, I didn't feel it come out. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of those, forget, you can tell me right here what that name is again when they numb you up, but. Uh, epidural. Epidural. Yeah, you've got babies, you know. So uh, yeah, we're really blessed to have these babies. We really are. Uh, it, it, my buddy, Terry Phillips out of Springfield, Missouri. Terry said, Herman, if I'd have known these grandbabies would have been this awesome, I'd have skipped my kids. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's a joke. You know, but yeah, we're, uh, I, I'm careful saying this. I want you all to know this though. I'm living my best life. And here's why. Because I'm not worried anymore about living underneath a bridge in a, in a cardboard box. You know, my whole life I thought I was going to, I was scared to death I was going to be poor. And, and uh, I just learned that, man, if you just work your butt off and position yourself, just be out there, go do. Oh, look here. Now we're going to run into some hardcore rain, Charlie. Damn it. Well, we're, we're 35, 40 minutes from the racetrack. So right now we're rolling through that was, we were down there at Peebley, Missouri at the scrap metal joint. And now we're rolling into Arnold, home of the Arnold water tower. You can tell I love my town when the water tower is the biggest thing. But anyway, <laughs> yes, it's been a, cra a crazy good time. I'm in control. I'm in control. I say, I say, I say, if I say yes or no. And my, my wife says, you need to learn to say no stronger. But I gotta tell you, such good stuff is happening right now that it's easy to tell Marcus Smith, yes, myself and John Roberts will do trackside live. Yes, I'll run 30 dirt races. Are you kidding me? Yes, I'll run the SRX race. So it was a good question about 15 minutes ago, Charlie. Uh, I am retired, but on my terms. So along those lines, you said living your best life. Do you feel like, even though you haven't raced NASCAR in a while, yeah. that you're maybe better well known now though through the through the social media, through the YouTube, through the Cars Tour, SRX, everything you're doing, Trackside Live? So everybody says, when I say everybody, I don't got names, but everybody on social media says, people I don't know, we're talking a lot. They say, you're more popular now than you've ever been. I think one of my greatest qualities is I don't know I'm famous. And I truly don't know I'm famous. And I don't handle, it's kind of weird because I seek attention. I'll admit that. I seek attention. I was born with that. My brother, Rusty, came so close in March. He was chewing my ass out. We were in a big argument. He goes, ever since you've been a little kid, and he stopped. 
I know, I know exactly what he was going to say. Ever since you've been a little kid, you seek attention. But you don't even got to tell me that. I know that. But I was born that way. Hey, I want love. Pay attention to me. But it's weird. Once you get attention, you're like, uh-oh. Uh, look away. I don't, I don't. <laughs> so I think God works in mysterious ways. I think if I am more popular now than I've ever been, it's because I don't want it. I have learned in life that when you want money, it won't come. You work for it. And then when you, when you go, you know what, I'm happy being me. Then all of a sudden people start calling you. It's like, what in the world? So it, it, it's, it's strange. I accept it, uh, but I'm still, I still say that although I seek attention, I don't know that I'm popular because, see popularity is a really weird deal because if you're gonna be popular in baseball, you gotta hit all these home runs and you gotta be the greatest Hall of Fame player. And, I, and I'll tell you this, I learned this. Uh, the people at Fox, Ed Gorn, Ed Gorn was the president of Fox Sports, and he's the first one to call me. Ed Gorn wanted me to do TV, and I wasn't ready to do TV. And he, he said, you know, Montana, the quarterback, you know, for the 49ers, he says, we got him to do TV, greatest quarterback of all time. And he was not very good at TV. So therefore, you just haven't heard of one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time very much because it's just over. So my mom always says, Ken, hun, you get things that come to you when you least expect it. And I knew you'd get your due. So I think my personality and my willing to talk and share all my downfalls, people like it that I tell them, hey, you know, I was on Ritalin. I grew up hyperactive. I seek attention, you know, I don't mind making fun of myself. It actually, it's great. I like making fun of myself because it gets it out there. Because then, then all the people are like, "Damn it, we can't make fun of him because he's making fun of himself." <laughs> so that's pretty much the way I feel about people saying I'm more popular now. I think my mom is right. We all get our due in life, but you got to work hard. You got to stay the course, and. Sometimes at the most unexpected times, things happen. It's strange. So what about general thoughts on the NASCAR season? We're about, about halfway through-ish. So what I think about NASCAR right now is they're finally, after 15 or 20 years of misery, it's been brutal. They're finally finding their new course because Although we do agree that NASCAR, let, let's just, to make the fans happy, let's say NASCAR was 50% at fault. I'm not going to go any more than that because with this invention of the cell phone and all the live streaming, life has changed so much. It was not all NASCAR's fault. Plus, people are more of a negative nature now. People are, people are meaner nowadays because of social media. Everybody just... I think NASCAR is the best it's ever been because they've taken enough chances. They know that the people our age, you know, we're the, you know, we're watching the races, but you know, we've got, we've got to create some excitement. So they took a chance and all the NASCAR car owners, they wanted this new car. They're the ones that wanted the next gen, the car owners. Hear my voice go up, surprise. So in some weird way, the car owners, man, it rained hard here. The car owners wanted that next gen car and it's really saved NASCAR because they can take their Daytona 500 car that runs 200 mile an hour at Daytona and take it straight, take that car to the Chicago street course race. And that is a huge, huge deal. And they can bang a little bit, you know, and they've learned a lot. And I think, I think, in my opinion, we'll do a show about it on the Kenny Wallace show, but I really think NASCAR is gonna go to Canada next year. I think they should go to Circuit Jacques Villeneuve in Montreal. I've raced there two or three times, love it. 
Uh, Sergeant Jacques Villeneuve is on an island. You know, when they had the, Charlie, you was probably a baby, but when they did the Olympics up in Montreal, uh, they did it on that island. It's an island, but it's a great college town. It's a very clean town. Now, I don't know if that's where they're gonna go, but I think they should. If they don't go to Sergeant Jacques, Jacques Villeneuve, I, I think it would be a mistake. Now, I understand the government's involved with that. I think it's government owned. I think it's kind of a park. Circuit Jacques Villeneuve is a park. So just to say, you know, it's not like there's a promoter. But I think NASCAR is finally doing really good. Doing really good. And I'm going to tell you what, it was exhausting. It was an exhausting 20 years. It was horrible. And it's a great sport. And uh, I, here, I'll take it. When we had, when we had Mark Martin on the Kenny conversation, Mark Martin said it best. Best racing I've ever seen in NASCAR history. And Mark Martin in that Arkansas twang, he said, he repeated himself, best racing in history. I don't like the car. <laughs> <laughs> so as a fabricator. In history. In history. I've seen the best racing in NASCAR history since that car has come out. I agree. Best racing on track in history. The best in history. So stop complaining about it. As a fabricator, the cars are very hard to work on, but it has produced the best racing in history. Schrader also says it best. He goes, Herman, people go, oh, it was so, it was such great times back then. He goes, when people think everything was better back in the day, it wasn't. Well, if they think it was, that's their opinion. Yeah. That's great. Let them think it. It depends on how you want to remember it. I, I don't remember it being that great. Maybe not right. I, I do agree NASCAR was awesome back in the day. It was. But just in general in life. Oh, I love my life as a child. When I was a child. Well, no shit. You had no bills. You know, your mom and dad paid for everything. When you were a kid, your life's wonderful because you have no stress. But Schrader does say it right. He says, man, when people talk about the good old days, Schrader goes, eh, they weren't that good. And then Chocolate Myers, who was Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s gas man, Chocolate says it funny too. He goes, you keep talking about how great it was back in the day. Uh, there was only one car on the lead lap back in the day. <laughs> so, so Chocolate's exactly right. Uh, so we deem what we want to be deemed good or bad. Yeah. So we're home. Your famous uh, hill that you walk. Herman's Hill. Herman's Hill. I, I wanted to buy some property right close to where I grew up. And I did. And uh, it was not very good property. And I had to figure out, how I'm going to put this driveway in. So instead of making the driveway go up, I made it go up on an angle. And people are always in my business. Oh, you got so much concrete. I said, hold on. Let me tell you why I have concrete. Because when I was a kid, I grew up poor and it was gravel, all gravel. And I, I swore one day that I'd have concrete. And I have a lot of great people that, whether it's the World of Outlaws with their souvenir trailer or Billy Moyer or Sheldon Hoddenschild, everybody in racing, they stop here and they come up that driveway with their toter homes and they use this big old concrete and they turn around and they go, boy, that's really nice. But the people that don't like me living here, the first thing they say is, man, you got so much concrete. And I'm like, and you should have walked on this gravel that I grew up, you know, walk on gravel, push them race cars around in the gravel. So that's thunder and lightning. It's just a little bit frightening. You better not, not. So, I, yeah, uh, we're home. I think that was a, that was a fun day. We, For sure. We, uh, we, we took some, we talked about the sheet metal. We made $24. Yeah. We went to, uh, we went to the Scrap Mart. Scrap Mart. Yeah. And uh, I think, Charlie, you're going to go, and I'm probably going to go eat some lunch. See you all later. Remember, please like and subscribe.
because me and Charlie really want this trophy because I'm a competitor. <laughs> I worked 75,000. We need 100,000 so we can get our little trophy from YouTube. Hey, at least I'm honest with you. And we are showing up on uh, Spotify, iTunes, podcast form. This is a long one, but you can watch it or listen to it on the way to work and on your way back. Until then, we just keep on rolling. <laughs>